I'm proud to be here with our comrades from the ANC and especially in Soweto at the grave of comrade Joe Slovo. Joe Slovo came to Ireland many times and there has been for many, many years cooperation and an affinity between Irish Republicans <coughs> and the ANC and MK. <laughs> We come here from Ireland and we bring you a message of solidarity. When you fought against apartheid, we stood with you. So we are told is known to people in Ireland. I was in prison when your children are butchered here and we we applaud you for your, your fortitude, for your courage and for your determination, for your tenacity. On behalf of the ANC, and I think I speak for the people of South Africa, we would like to say a very warm welcome to our visitors from Sinn Féin. We have come here to, to learn and to listen. We would be acutely interested to learn, uh, and there, there are dissimilarities, of course, in, in this regard, how the ANC, as, as one of, we would say, the main catalyst for change, was able to prevent stalling, was able to prevent uh, the peace process from uh, being slowed down. We, as the African National Congress, give our support to the processes for peace, for an end to the conflict in Northern Ireland, in Ireland, and uh, hope that all parties will, in the end, copy the experience that we have been through. We have confidence in the leadership of Sinn Féin and the British government that uh, they'll be able to resolve these matters amicably. And uh, we fully support uh, the peace process and uh, we will do everything in our power to support all the parties engaged in the search for peace. We cannot accept any obstacles in the pathway to peace. And what has been created here in this country of South Africa was three or four years ago, ten years ago, described as an intractable conflict. It isn't and it wasn't. There was a will here to make peace. Sinn Féin are going back to Ireland reinforced in our commitment to make peace. Well, Sinn Féin will never put out of the peace process. We are absolutely committed to building a peace settlement. We need all of the parties together, led by London, led by Dublin, bringing everyone to a negotiating table at which every issue will be on the table for discussion, everyone will be at the table, and we will be seeking to expedite matters so that we can have those all party talks. Actually, yeah, certainly. I was expecting that. It's like the washing. <laughs> it's like the washing of the spears. Actually. <laughs> British put him under an awful lot of pressure not to meet in the first instance, not to extend a, a, an invitation at all, and then when we met, not to shake hands. And uh, I remember when we when we did meet, we met privately, and and he shook hands. Uh, he said to me with a smile, "I not wash this hand for a week." So he was very humorous. I got to know, as did some of us here, Nelson Mandela, quite well. I met him numerous times, uh, had lengthy conversations uh, with him. And Nelson Mandela was always loyal. 
if you look look at his history, mm-hmm. he was loyal to us because we were part of the anti-apartheid struggle. Uh, Irish Republicans played a, 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 a role in that, and the Irish also, uh, led by Cotter Asmael, the late Cotter Asmael, were, were part of all of that. And he was loyal to us, as he was to other people in other so, parts so, so, of the uh, world. And, and that's why when he came to Ireland, mm-hmm. uh, he refused to condemn uh, armed struggle. He, he argued for peace. He, he argued for talks. Uh, he was criticised by the Irish establishment, by the Irish media, and by the British media, but he never wavered at all on any of those issues. It's here. We've got Jerry Adams, the leader of Sinn Féin from Northern Ireland. 